World Cup 2010 is in full swing and I've been thinking about some of the classic footy games we all grew up playing as kids. The good and the not so good. Yes! 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 Let's be honest, I'm Irish, so apart from torturing my Thierry Henry voodoo doll <laughs> You fuck. You fuck. You, you and your stupid hand. I really have nothing better to be doing anyway. Back when most of us were still crapping our nappies, football games were about as far removed from reality as possible. For years all we had to play was Match Day on the Amstrad, which was a great game as long as you like football played in slow motion, with Moon Gravity by Purple Monsters. And say what you want about Vuvuzelas, back in 1987 people used to celebrate goals by lifting up badly tuned radios. The first truly great football game was Kickoff, which brought a whole new aspect to football games never before seen. Kickoff was the first football game where the ball didn't automatically stick to your player's feet, which really made a huge difference. It also introduced stuff like action replays, players with different statistics, uh, fouls, yellow and red cards, injuries, injury time, and even referees with different moods. But as revolutionary as it was, it still didn't use video evidence, which is probably why it was so popular in Seth Blatter's house. Then in 1994 we all became goal scoring superstar heroes with the release of Sensible Soccer, one of the best football games ever made. Thousands of real team and player names, a fleshed out management mode, every league and cup under the sun and some of the most satisfying gameplay of the day. The original Amiga release has long reached cult status, enough to warrant a stunning HD remake of Sensible World of Soccer on Xbox Live Arcade. Go and buy it you mug. Back before the wacky, isometric angles of the FIFA games, football was mostly played from a bird's eye view. For Mega Drive owners, there was only one such game worth talking about. Bundled free with the console, crammed onto a cartridge alongside Super Hang On and Columns, was Italian 90. It was fucking terrible, impossible to see where you were passing the ball, spine-breaking banana goalkeepers, and a world map that looked like it had been drawn by a five-year-old with crayons between his toes. After the tournament it was rebranded Sega Soccer so that a whole new generation could fall out of love with the beautiful game all over again. They literally changed the opening titles. They even kept that weird grunt at the start. Years later the similar looking Empire Soccer came out on the Amiga which was equally as crap but it was great if you wanted your flatmates to think you were a pervert as every time you did a slide tackle it sounded like you were touching yourself. Just stick up the volume, tackle the opposition to bits, and nobody would ever disturb you. Some players have lended far more than just their names to video games. Gaz has done it, Graham Souness has done it, twice actually, lending his famous moustache to one management game and the freakish geometrical nightmare that is Graham Souness Vector Soccer. But nobody has taken player licensed football games quite as seriously as Soccer Saturday's very own Chris Kamara. Chris Kamara Street Soccer was one of the first games to focus on five-a-side football, allowing PlayStation 1 fans to play in some of Cammy's favourite locales, including on top of a skyscraper, Easter Island, and everybody's favourite, the inside of a castle. But my favourite part was the team selection screen, just check out all those random people wearing culturally accurate clothing. They even have the stereotypical Englishman, a short black guy with a blonde beard. But if licensing football pairs isn't enough for you, how about clubs? Club football, released on the PlayStation 2 and original Xbox, had no less than 18 separate editions, from Manchester United, Chelsea and Arsenal, to Bayern Munchkin, Ajax and Borussia Dor Bor Borus Leeds. Each game was given its own super imaginative box art, and in the case of Chelsea, is a special mode where you could sleep with all your friends' wives, get knocked the fuck out by Abu Dhabi, and forget how to defend in the knockout stages of the World Cup. Like any sports game, football has had its fair share of novelty titles. There was controversial foul em up red card, apparently Ryan Shawcross is a fan. Yeah! Then there's side-scrolling platform game Soccer Kid, which came out around the time of USA 94. Better still, Mario Strikers Charged for Nintendo Wii, a game you could easily fob off as a shameless cash-in, is actually one of the best multiplayer games available on the Wii. Heavily influenced by Sega Soccer Slam, its actual likeness to the game of football is arguable, but if you own a Wii and frequently have mates over, it's definitely worth checking out. And thus we get to the never-ending battle 
between Konami's Pro Evolution series and EA's FIFA, a rivalry that's ensured both franchises have had to up their game continuously for the past five years. In the 90s, FIFA was revolutionary, introducing updated graphics, realistic animations, and the fantastic in their mode that will probably never see the light of day again as long as EA are making FIFA Street games. But then they got lazy and downright greedy, and more and more gamers switched to playing ISS, which eventually turned into Pro Evolution Soccer and soon became the football lover's football game of choice. Despite a long stretch of Pro Evolution dominance, the FIFA series has had a Phoenix-like resurgence these past two years, with the recent FIFA 10 hailed as the best football game of all time by gamers and critics alike. That being said, Pro Evolution 2010 is the best PES game in years, and all eyes are on October for next year's inevitable grudge match. Sure, I've skimmed over loads like Actua Soccer, the official UEFA games, this is football, Super Soccer, Goal, not to mention Championship, Premiership and LMA Manager games, but it's a funny thing, most of us will happily play a couple of shooters, racing games or RPGs at any one time, but when it comes to football games we're very quick to align ourselves with one particular series. Like teams, we support our favourite football games and will readily fight their corner against opposition fans. It's that support and loyalty which has forced football games developers to up their game every single year, and it's that competition which has made football games among the most progressive and cutting edge of all video game genres. He's got a score! Well that's a great goal, and the home team have taken the lead.